Hi! I know it's been a while, so I'm so excited to come back and do January for your sign. Um, where I've been, I will, when I have some time, make a longer, more intensive video about that, if you care. But I think most of you just kind of want to know what's going on for my January. So this video is going to be a little bit longer. I had out my pendulum. I had out, like, seven or eight different decks of cards. I had out, like, even some, like, astrology dice. Um, so there's a lot in this video. And I will also uh, put somewhere on my website a little cheat sheet to help you get through the month. It's going to have your lucky days. It's going to have your unlucky days, the general theme. Um, what else does it have in it? Oh, of course your power crystal, your power color. It's going to have affirmations, which chakra you want to focus on this month, how you can spiritually evolve, blah, blah, blah. It's like the all-encompassing January. Like, get you off on the right foot right out the gate for this brand new year. So I'm so excited to do this for you and let's just get into it. I keep forgetting to mention this, but for those of you who um, don't know, if you go to my website, and there's like a link in the description box below, you can sign up to win a free reading every month. And so like you just sign up once and you're automatically in the drawing forever style. And so I just wanted to let you know. Hi Aquarius, so this is January. A um, lot of stuff going on here. I kind of done these in different orders for the other two signs that I already did for Aries and Gemini. I think for you, I'm going to start with um, what the kind of vibes are that I picked up with my little astrology dice here. Okay, so first of all, for you, we've got this kind of like north node in um, seventh house vibe. And so that's like your life mission, your goal, your purpose, like this current life that you're in, whether you believe in past lives or not, <laughs> but like the lessons you're supposed to learn, okay? So it's that in regards to partnerships, in regards to marriage, in regards to business, or even in regards to like the enemies that you have, okay? So that's kind of like the theme or the vibe that we're picking up on. Like, what is it we're supposed to be learning? What are we supposed to be accomplishing? And it's not going to be easy, okay? Because our purpose, our path, the lessons that we come here to learn are never easy here on earth. And so it's like, okay, this is the vibe for January. I'm going to be learning some shit with other people. And then it just is what it is. So there's that. But then we have the flip side of it which is like the south node, kind of like our past lives, like our innate, inherent abilities, skills, talents, that kind of stuff, um, in the eighth house, which is of like loss, change, um, sometimes even sex. So it's like, for some of you, this could be like, oh, wow, I've made a really cool sexual connection with somebody. I feel like I have been boning them since the beginning of time, <laughs> okay? Could be something like that. Um, but, you know, put into contrast with the other vibe we were picking up on, you know, partnerships, relationships with other people and having it be a challenge, it's like maybe you feel this connection to them, but one of you is married. This could be something like that. Um, but for the majority of you, it's more going to be in regards to, like, changes, OK, like these are I feel like I've been through something like this before, like um, my intuition is telling me like this is very deja vu. -y, OK, um, and so you have some sort of like inherent knowledge that you can't really discern where it's coming from that will help you in these kind of relationships with other people. Does that make sense? Because it will be challenging, but you're going to need these other people um, kind of like on your path for 2019. So that's setting the stage. Then let's just see what we have for you generally in January. 
and we're getting the Hierophant. So things are going to seem outwardly like they typically are. Not much different than December. How about they're supposed to go? Um, you might feel somewhat stifled um, by this expectation that you're supposed to live a certain way or do things a certain way. And so that'll be interesting in contrast with like the astrology type vibes that I was picking up on. But what they're saying here is it's like emotionally, you know, that even though somebody else is telling you, no, this is the way that things go. This is the way that you do things. This is part of your purpose. This is part of your plan. That maybe the way you personally want to do it, it's not time to give up on that yet. It just isn't time. You're not ready to abandon that, and that's okay. You have to find your own way. It's your path. It's your plan. It's, you know, your purpose. And the only person who knows that is you. Well, and like God and spirit, the universe, angels, whatever. You're psychic. <laughs> okay. So... Moving on from there, uh, let's talk about your, let's just get this out of the way, your lucky days <laughs> and then your unlucky days. We've got the 5th of January as well as the 5th of January. So this is interesting because it's like no matter how you handle it, it might be the best day or it might be the worst day. But that being said, what do we know about trauma? What do we know about um you know, like studies that they do psychologically on people. When when people are pulled, not only is the worst day of their life um, also the best day of their life because it orchestrated some sort of change. <laughs> um, you, like people don't say that usually like about their best day of their life, right? Like, oh, it was also the worst day of my life. But people say that all the time about the worst day of their life was like the best thing that ever happened to them because it's something that put them on a new path, like put them in a new direction. So anyway, um, it's going to kind of depend on your mindset, okay? And that'll become more clear as we go through these. So your color, your power color for the month, lavender. So you can use this as like a purple, like a lavender ray of light. You can actually put lavender um, flowers in your home, use some essential oils or something like that to really embrace this energy. But this is going to help you to connect your mind, body, and soul all together. And why is this important? Because it's going to increase with the 44, um, not only your harmony and stability at home, but help you to attract abundance. Now, Moving along that purple vein, you know, related to the third eye chakra, is your affirmation or your um, your affirmation card. And so the theme of that is acceptance. And your affirmation is, I'm learning to accept the things that I cannot change. Okay, so let's piggyback that back on. The fifth of the month might be, you know, a good day or it might be a bad day or it might be a both day for you. Um and that being said, I mean, I guess every single Aquarius it might not have that happen right on the 5th. This is a general reading. It could be a couple days ahead or, um, you know, behind. But round about the 5th is going to be an important date for you guys. So uh, talking about your chakra that you want to work on this month. They said that it was the heart chakra. Now, the reason I bring that up is because you might be thinking, oh, based on all this purple, it's about this third eye awakening. Okay, yeah, we're going through some, like, serious, like, transformative, you know, third eye shit, but our heart chakra is where we want to focus our attention and our energy, not only because the chakra system is like the Maslow's Pyramid, where you can't really deal with the shit at the top if the stuff at the bottom is not quite right, um, but our heart chakra needs to be big and open um, for us to be like on this path where our body, mind, and soul can all be connected. If you have a big old heart chakra blockage, there's no way that you can clearly see what's going on with yourself and what it is that you need to change and what it is you need to release and let go of. You might have your third eye pretty open and be able to intuit things for other people, but you might find that it's hard to really reflect within yourself, okay? So, that's why it's important that I mention this because your spiritual hobby for the month, like if there's one thing you were going to focus on, whether that's like tarot cards, crystals, whatever, for you, it's meditation, okay? That's what I'm getting here. So you'll want to meditation, you'll want to do meditations with like these purple kind of energies, but focusing on the heart chakra is going to do you the biggest benefit. Now, um, with all of that, 
they're saying that your overall goal is to figure out what your priorities are this month. Um, to understand the paramount importance of manifesting love into all situations. There comes full circle with that heart chakra, right? Now, when we are talking about that, it is requiring us to accept the things that we can't change and to be able to reframe a shitty situation. Why do we keep talking about shitty situations like something's impending? Okay, I'm not saying something bad is going to happen, but I am saying it seems like there might be some disappointment here, and it's not necessarily something that happens to you. It's more of like a letdown, okay? Because with the Five of Cups card here in this specific deck, it's like the rainbow are our dreams, our hopes, our wishes. And all of a sudden, you know, and you've got these cups out here. You're waiting to receive what this rainbow is going to put in these cups. But then your dreams, they just light on fire. It's just like, when they're blown away. And you're like, oh, God, I am fucking sad. And as this is burning up, you see how, like, the ashes are falling into the cups? Okay. So I've got, I've got five cups. You know, we all have ten cups. That's the Happily Ever After card. But so now, you know, like... Half of the things that I was hoping for and I was dreaming for are gone. Just like completely gone. Like wiped. I'm sad. Okay? And I can't be happy now. I can't be ten of cups because these five of cups are dirty. Right? They are filled with ashes. With ashes of dis disappointment. Well, what are cups? Cups is like the heart chakra. Cups are our emotions. So we need to wash out these five cups because... We can't drink out of, we can't drink this like happiness, this joy, this love, this, you know, positivity, these dreams that we have when the cup is dirty. Nobody wants to drink out of a dirty cup. So what you're going to go do is you're going to wash this shit out. You're going to meditate. You're going to accept the things that you can't change. You're going to connect your mind, your body, your spirit all together in this meditation, opening up that heart chakra and then walking into February, it's going to be a much better situation for you. But it's kind of like, let's reevaluate here what our wishes were. Because maybe we put all of this hope, this stuff, into somebody else, and then they left us, or they disappointed us. Or maybe it was like, oh man, like I really hope that I get this promotion, or I really hope I win the lottery, and then you didn't. And that just... Pfft, it just lights up all of those hopes and dreams and you're disappointed and you're sad and it might not even be your fault. But you're not going to be happy until you decide to rinse out those cups. To say, you know what, okay, it is time to reevaluate what's important to me, what do I want? Because the best thing about disappointment is it really shows us like, what is it we were focused on and is that actually what I wanted and what's good for me? Well, you're going to have a better understanding of what you want and what's good for you when your mind your uh, body and your soul are all connected, right? And then spirit's allowed to, to dump that into your heart chakra and to download that through your third eye. Because remember, we had an eight for abundance. You can have the things you want, but maybe you got to reevaluate what you want because you keep ending up disappointed. Maybe this is not what's good for you. Sometimes the universe, God, spirit, angels, whatever, know what's good for you more than you know what's good for you, right? Like, you might have this idea like, oh, I really want to be with this person. Like, my life would be perfect if I was just with this person. If this person just loved me. So then you end up in a relationship with them and then, like, something, and then you find out things about them that you really can't stand and it ends up to be, like, the worst thing ever. What if they, like, spent all your money, <laughs> you know? Like, what if this? What if that? So, I'm not saying live in what ifs, but I'm just trying to give you an example of like sometimes we think we know what's going to make us happy, but we really got to put our faith in like a higher power sometimes um, that like God, the universe, whatever knows sometimes what's better for us than what is. And then we can reframe this. We can decide instead to hope or want for something else or something different that is more fulfilling because anyway, this was only going to fill five cups. It was only going to fill half of the needs that we need to fill to be, you know, supremely content and euphoric, which is 10. So there's that. So anyway, what you were hoping for, it was a little fucked up in the first place. That's my point. So you're going to be a little disappointed, but you don't have to live in that disappointment. It's just a chance to reevaluate and to like kind of cleanse everything so that going through 2019, you set a new goal and then you get what you want. And it's actually better for you than if you would have gotten what you would have originally asked for. So 
what else did I want to tell you here? Um, let's see how this might play out for most of you. Okay, so they're saying the Empress in reverse card, okay? And the Empress in this deck is the daughter of the Mighty Ones. So it's like, essentially, you used to be this way. You used to, like, be reading the sunshine and feeling totally in control, and it's like, now you're maybe not, okay? Um, your confidence is shot as a result of this disappointment. But they're saying, like, with the Two of Wands here in reverse, which is the Lord of Dominion, like, is not that serious, guys. It really isn't. It was five cups. It wasn't ten. Okay? It's not the serious. It's not the end of the world. It's an opportunity to reevaluate. And so then they're saying, like, you don't have to make a decision. Like, you might feel stir-crazy. You might feel like, I have to do this or I have to do that. And, like, I'm frozen in fear and I don't know what to do. I don't really know what I want. They're like, it's okay. Just cool it. Just chill. You're fine. You're going to be fine. The things that happen next are actually better for you than if you would have gotten what you wanted in the first place. And so they're saying, with the Ten of Swords here, this disappointment, it's actually in reverse. They're saying, this is a moment to heal. This is a great month for you to heal. And so your crystal of the month is Galena, which I love because it's like super dense and heavy, but it's also shiny and beautiful. Anyway, um, you can learn more about this on my website and also order one if you want. Whoops. Never ever put this in your mouth or in your butt or something because it's a root chakra one. That's why I mentioned your butt, not like most people put crystals in their butt. Um, but the reason why I'm saying is because it does contain lead, so it can be toxic. So anyway, that's why I wanted to mention that. But the general uses for this are to help ground you, to give you confidence, um, to support you in huge life changes, like reevaluating. <laughs> okay? It um, increases feelings of harmony. It centers you. It um, is kind of like a detox, which you kind of maybe need a little bit. Just because we have put a lot of hope and faith in something that wasn't for us. And so this will help you to kind of figure this out. It'll help you to find more enthusiasm and to be more imaginative about other things that will um, help you to achieve all of this happiness and joy that you want in your life. So that's that. I love you so much and I'll see you in February. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!